Morehouse is the author of the Edith Campbell Berry series. Grand Days is the first novel in the trilogy. Then there's Dark Palace, which won the Miles Franklin Literary Award in 2001. The final novel is called Cold Light, and it's our book of the month for November. Welcome, Frank. Can you give us an insight on where the life of Edith Campbell Berry takes us in Cold Light? Well, Edith has has seen the failure of the League of Nations and the devastation of the Second World War uh, and has been caught up in the huge displacement of peoples and, and, and the, the destruction of, of capital cities and the fall of nation states and empires during the, during the Second World War and after the Second World War and comes back to Australia uh, from Europe from the, as she says, from the oldest city, Geneva, uh, to one of the, new, to the newest city in the world, Canberra. Uh, she comes back to be, uh, uh, to, to continue her, uh, her dream of becoming a diplomat, and it was very difficult for women to become diplomats in Australia or any other country uh, in the 50s and 60s. Um, and the, but she thinks that with her experience that that Australia would snap her up. Australia had just formed a diplomatic service. Uh, for the first time, we were appointing ambassadors and, and establishing embassies around the world. She, uh, but she is uh, uh, rebutted and, and finds that there are lots of roadblocks uh, to her ever getting to, into the diplomatic service. Uh, as it so happens, Canberra become Canberra as a vision uh, has uh, has reignited uh, in Australia when she arrives there, and she gets caught up in in the terrific enthusiasm that Robert Gordon Menzies, the Prime Minister at the time, had for for the Canberra vision, and becomes uh, very much a part of the structuring of a distinctive city, a remarkable city. Uh, uh, for uh, Australia uh, as a capital city. The main character in Cold Light, Edith Campbell Berry, is such an incredibly complex and amazing, as a woman particularly, I found, a multi-layered character. And she's really resonated with a lot of readers. Why do you think we have such a connection with her? Well. <clears throat> it was a time uh, her, her her life corresponds with the with the uh, the uh, the liberation of of women from uh, a very subservient role in most of the Western countries, uh, in a very narrow role. And during this, it started in the of course with the suffragettes, but in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s into the 70s, this was a, this was a, a was building uh, as a, an energizing force in, in Western, Western countries that women uh, were at last going to be treated as equals and in politics and, and in commerce and in, and in uh, the economy as a whole, there was a going to be, a, there was in fact a great revolution and she was riding the wave of that revolution in many ways symbolizes that that revolution She's the underdog and she was although she wasn't an active feminist in consciously and and there wasn't a movement as we understand it uh, she was obviously um, trying well in attempts to become a diplomat the first woman in the one of the first women to go into the di diplomatic service, she was uh, uh, breaking ground and uh, she was uh, leading. And so in many ways she's, I, know I didn't set out to write a book about uh, this generation of women. I mean, it draws a lot on my mother who was uh, a very active, active in public life and, um, and it draws on, a, on a, uh, the life of uh, of a Canadian woman, Mary McGeechee, ah. who was uh, in the League of Nations and who also ended up uh, in playing various other roles in, in uh, public life after the Second World War. So I've drawn on two models there um, for, for Edith, yeah.
So the entire trilogy was 21 years in the making. How much did you sort of live and breathe, Edith? <laughs> Are you happy to see the end of her? I didn't. I don't think any writer really knows how much of their life is going to go into a book. You don't know how long it's going to be. The book, I certainly had no idea what the length of the book would be. I did have a trilogy in mind, but the... Um, but in, as it turns out, it took uh, five years to write the first book and dealing with the earlier life of Edith. It, uh, and it was qu then I, I rested and did some other things and then returned to the second volume uh, dealing with another part of Edith's life uh, and that uh, became Dark Palace. And then finally, after a while, uh, after a couple of years, I thought uh, I should re-engage with the character because there'd been a lot of wonderful reception. The book had had a wonderful reception here and in the UK and in France and in the, in, in, in the United States. And I was, I was, uh, but I mean, it had never been a bestseller. Uh, it wasn't a, a sort of airport novel, really. Uh, so you didn't know when you started the first book how the third one would end? No, I had no real forward plan. I, I knew that I knew that in some ways the, the history of the League of Nations be, would be part of the structure of the book, and it had a beginning and an end. But no, I, I did not know... Uh, well, I, lots of writers don't really know. We are led by the the book unfolds in a we write in a trance-like state. Uh, <laughs> but it tied up so many loose ends. Ah, uh, well, yes, and you have to. It, after a while, it becomes a lot to, to for the mind to juggle. I mean, it ca carries uh, because the three books deal with three parts of her life. Uh, uh, that. And uh, what for four four decades or of of uh, world history, and the history of ideas that she became the character becomes fascinated by various ideas, including international diplomacy and, as I said, uranium and and there are whole lots of of wonderful and strange ideas that had to be explored, and I had to follow those through and I was on a learning curve as well as my characters. Mm. Frank Morehouse, what is the book that's most influenced your life and why? Uh, by now a lot of books have influenced me of course but uh, as, a, as a young person once I was quite, uh, I'd been injured myself and I was in bed for a number of months uh, at um, end of primary school or middle school, and I was um, I, I read Alice in Wonderland and 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 became remarkably changed by it. I uh, first of all the the remarkable exercise of the imagination that it is, and and the fact that it can. Ge generation after generation are, are, are captured by it, and it's full of, of 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 very big philosophical questions as well, which I of course didn't quite know then, but I know from having revisited the book, <laughs> uh, and that uh, that that book caused me to think I would like to be not only affected by the magic of, of, literature, of literature, of, of, of the imagination, of w with working with words, but also be the magician. Mm. I wanted to be a magician. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Frank. Thank you, Veronica. If you want to read the first chapter of Cold Light, you can do so at randomhouse.com.au. That's it for this year, but join us next year for more Random Book Talk. <laughs> <laughs>